final year talk um, via uh, Skype. And my name is Martin Ramsey. I'm the Employment Relations Manager for the BMA based in the west of Scotland. We uh, are going to record um, today's presentation and the, the actual PowerPoint uh, slides will be um, sent around to anyone who, who is registered. I think there may may have been some issues with registration or with getting the link for some people today. Uh, I understand that was because they had signed up for next week's um, talk, next Wednesday's talk, so there might have been a bit of confusion there. No big drama at all, um, but just uh, to explain if you, you did perhaps have an issue with that. Um, to ensure that I'm not speaking to myself here, can someone just confirm they can hear me uh, in the, the, the chat box, please? Thank you very much. Um, I see the, 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 the rules here are, are pretty straightforward. Um, uh, mics on mute all time, and you can uh, use that, that, that conversation box to ask questions as we go along. Uh, I'll try to answer them in, um, in due course, maybe incorporate it into the talk. If not, I'll definitely get round to it at the end. And for some reason, if I have missed it, uh, you get another chance at the end as we do a, a Q&A roundup. As I said, my name is Martin Ramsey, I'm the Employment Relations Manager over in the west of Scotland. Um, around this time of year, April, May, sometimes June, myself and um, my employment advisor colleagues would be doing this talk in person uh, at every medical school in the country um, to final year students because it is uh, a big change uh, that, that, that approaches um, students in, in your position. Uh, five years of medical school, such a focus clearly um, on, on that particular education. Uh, the world of work in the NHS is slightly different. I don't think there's a great deal of preparation for that within the, the actual um, course itself. Therefore, uh, we find that talk, uh, that, that opportunity um, to get some fundamentals over to you and invaluable, um, an invaluable thing at the best of times. Clearly, this is a, a very different situation we, we find ourselves in this year. Uh, so as well as getting some of those fundamentals over to you, uh, we'll also have to address the, uh, the the issues that are at the forefront of our minds at the moment uh, with respect to uh, the COVID arrangements. First of all, uh, just a point of clarity, really, uh, in making the distinction between um, the BMA and your defence organisation, MPS, MDUS, MDU, whomever it may be. Um, we're not the same. Uh, to be fully protected, you need to be a member of both. We don't deal with what you call professional issues and clinical issues uh, in the workplace. Um, just as a, a defence body, don't really deal with employment issues, matters of contract, um, the kind of employment processes such as disciplinaries, grievance, bullying, harassment um, policies, that, that's not for them to do either. Uh, so two sides of the house really, uh, and in order to be fully protected, uh, you, you should be a member of the BMA and a member of one of the defence organisations. In this talk, uh, the first three points in those slides, a wee bit of the, the, the fourth one as well, uh, are specifically related to uh, the arrangements in place for trying to tackle COVID and this early graduation process and recruitment process, uh, that training induction, of course. And then we will be talking about the rest anyway, contract uh, of employment requirements, um, how the salary scale works, how working hours actually function, uh, how rest requirements are, are built into that, and then the benefits of, of BMA membership. So obviously, in any normal year and this year, you need to be registered with the GMC in order to, um, to work. And the GMC has agreed principles for this early graduation of, of medical students all across the UK. Uh, it is just moving everything forward uh, where appropriate and possible uh, to allow medical students to uh, get this kind of provisional registration earlier than normal. I understand that the process of early graduations is going as well as can be expected. Uh, I think some are done, uh, some are, are, are imminent. So. Um, 
that's good to hear. If there are issues, and there are issues with you as an individual, please, please uh, let us know in due course. NES, NHS Education Scotland, uh, will be responsible for um, all the recruitment of what, what are called FIY1 posts, interim FY1 posts um, for final year students. Uh, and once that early graduation has been confirmed with the GMC, they will write to you about you know gaining uh, that, that provisional registration. And while doing that, while waiting for that, uh, you should commence your application uh, for one of these posts via the, the portal, uh, which is managed by the, the UK Foundation Programme Office. Um, if it isn't possible um, to match you with an available uh, interim FY1 post, the, the Foundation School, the Scottish Foundation School, will be in touch uh, to see if you would be interested in uh, being considered for one of the, the healthcare support worker roles uh, that are also available. And there are some non-final year students um, who will be filling some of those as well, hopefully. Still, Nezzy's responsibility for your training uh, and induction in these posts. Uh, however, Obviously, some of the induction, some of the training uh, will be role specific, and that is therefore the responsibility of the individual health board or a department or unit within that health board um, to be getting that right and getting it appropriate. Uh, that obviously includes uh, the correct use of personal protective equipment, which I'm sure you'll have heard all about in recent weeks, um, which is obviously vital uh, if you're going to be uh, in contact with patients who are infected um, with the coronavirus. If you're a BMA member, if you've been put in a situation uh, where you don't feel that the training has been adequate, it's been um, half-hearted, you've effectively been left to, to sink or swim, just get on with it, uh, please, please let us know. Uh, and we can see what we can do uh, about addressing that, because you should not be in a position where you have not been appropriately um, trained and inducted um, to, to be able to deal with what's coming to you. That if uh, interim FY1 contract um, will be, as I said, employed by NES, uh, and what we're about to talk about um, would be the same if you were graduating as normal and starting work in August. Uh, you will receive, of course, your, your individual contract of employment. You will have many individual contracts of employment um, as of this year, all the way to you finish uh, your, your medical career. All of them, if you're working for the NHS, uh, are based on agreed national terms and conditions of service. The BMA is the sole, um, or has the sole bargaining uh, responsibility uh, for agreeing those national terms and conditions. That's the same for um, uh, junior doctors contracts, as it is for SAS grade doctors, as it is for consultants, salary GPs. Um, they are all based on this wider um, terms and conditions of service. So your contract, your individual contract, has to be based, uh, has to include those wider terms and conditions. It will have some specifics, of course, relating to you, uh, your hours of work, your pattern of work, and we'll, we'll talk about that a wee bit later on, your annual salary, which will, of course, change uh, as you, you, you move, but it needs to be right, and again, we'll talk about that in a moment. Your sick pay, uh, your your leave entitlement for, for sick uh, sickness absence will change as you build up more service within the NHS. So that needs to be right. It needs to be appropriate for the level that you're at. Your annual leave will change uh, halfway through your, your specialty training, I think, uh, after point three in the scale. It moves um, from five weeks plus 10 public holidays to, to six weeks. Uh, and your notice period will get longer as your um, service uh, with the NHS increases. So when you receive your contract, whether it be your first one or your tenth, it needs to be right, and it needs to match your um, particular length of service. We at the BMA have a contract checking service. It's free. It's part of, of your membership. And they will do that for you. They will check uh, that the, the contract that you have uh, is in line with the model terms and conditions uh, uh, from a wider point of view, and the actual specifics are correct. They are applicable and appropriate for where you are. Please, please use it. I cannot stress this enough. Um, they are kept busy. They are kept busy for a reason. Uh, is because 
some contracts are, are, are not right. There's been a mistake made. And that mistake, especially if it's with respect to pay, uh, for, you know, an incorrect salary point, for example, uh, can have consequences because that will then follow on to your next one and your next post. Uh, and then that's a hell of a job at some point to try and work our way back to find where the error occurred. If you use that, simply sending away the PDF to that inbox, you get it checked, you have peace of mind. These guys work with these terms and conditions all the time. They know them inside out. With all due respect, you don't. Why would you? You didn't train to know uh, terms and conditions back to front. You train to know other things um, to that level of detail. So please use us um, throughout your rotation. You'll have many of them. Those are the salary skills, and you access the service once you remember. Uh, you, you can find the, uh, the, the, the inbox address uh, for the contract check-in service that should be on the website. Certainly easy to find, and you simply send them away uh, with your membership number, uh, and they will they will check that for you. And again, getting in that routine of doing that once you rotate um, is is something I would strongly advise. The salary skills there. These figures are um, accurate as of April 19. They will be due to change uh, with with the, the the 2021 award, which which hasn't been um, hasn't been published yet. That's published by uh, the DDRB, the Doctors and Dentists Review Body. They set your wages. They they, they assess everything on it on an annual basis uh, and move things up or. Uh, there, there was a time um, 10 years ago when there, there was a, a pay freeze for a year or so. Um, so that's the situation as it is. Uh, it will probably be likely to change by, by August, certainly. Uh, we have a question here, what was the salary banding likely to be for an interim FY? I'll get to that uh, in a moment. The answer is it will be dependent, of course, on, on the rota. Um, but I'll, I'll deal with banding and the, the interim situation in a moment, if, if that's okay. So we have three salaries there, three points uh, for an FY1 and an FY2, and then, of course, six for, for specialty training. Uh, and you would start at that, that, that minimum point, the 24991, as it currently is. You may wonder why there are more than one, why there is more than one point for FY1 and, and FY2. Um, I mean, ideally, in a, in a straight run through, uh, one year in FY1, one year in FY2, straight into specialty training. Um, you just meet those minimum points and, and away you go. We build in two extra years because sometimes it isn't as simple as that. Sometimes that training has to be extended for a, a number of reasons, um, not least maternity or long-term sick leave or, or, or whatever uh, it, it may be. Uh, and it would be unfair then to keep someone on that salary if there, there is a need to extend, there is a need to repeat uh, FY1 or FY2. Uh, and there's the, the, we've built in um, some kind of, of increment within those scales. So the question there, uh, are there, is this the rates for Scotland or the, the rest of the UK? Um, this, this is Scotland, yeah. Working hours or the... The, the, the way we organise work, and again, the next few months um, might be very, very different um, than it, it would be in a normal in a normal year. And hopefully, as it will be in August, if we can kind of get back to some kind of normality by August or September, the normal working patterns um, are split into three general um, types. Uh, we we have the traditional on-call rota, working a normal day, on-call for emergencies at night and weekend, then you're at work the following day, um, with some obviously rest built in, which we'll talk about uh, in a moment. Um, that's a kind of traditional format. Uh, there will be more of the second in our coming weeks, uh, I think for all grades, and not just trainees, which is the, the full shift. Uh, it's the full 24 hours are covered by someone that's there, and they're working eight-hour shifts or whatever it may be um, to make up uh, that, that, that day, and it's a, it's a full um, intensive uh, approach rather than just being on call um, for, for nights and weekends. And a partial shift rota, a bit of a hybrid, um, a bit of a, a variety and mixture, again, depending on the needs of the service. 
and these working patterns, the, these, these working types, are very important in uh, determining what's called banding. Someone asked about that uh, earlier. And you can see uh, the three main ones there, band one, band two, and, and band three. Uh, the, the first qualification is the, the, the number of hours um, actually worked per week on average. Uh, band one would, would be up to 48 hours, band two, 49 to 56, and band three is something that is non-compliant, it's over 56 hours, uh, and it doesn't meet um, the, the rest requirements of the New Deal as well, not just the hour limit. Within those bands, bands one and two, um, we have uh, different uh, sections, as you can see, uh, A, B, and C in the case of band one, and A and B in the case of band two. Uh, and that, that's not, it's to recognize that, well, working 47 hours is one thing, but when do those hours, uh, when are those hours worked? Uh, when is the, uh, the, the, the expectation? Where's the waiting uh, of, of that rota? Does it consistently encroach into uh, on social hours, which of course, um, evenings and weekends? Uh, and that's why we have to understand uh, a bit more nuance uh, about the rota. Uh, and that's why if you're doing a, a rota that meets uh, the, the, the 40 hour limit, for example, um, but, but so much of it is, is required um, uh, during unsocial hours, then you'll get that, that band 1A is what we call it, and we'll, we'll look at that in a moment, which is 50%. How that's determined, uh, first of all, is through a, a software package called DRS, uh, and that, that, that rotor that template rota is produced. That is what it looks like in theory. That's what should happen. It should be compliant, uh, and it should meet, you know, whatever whatever limits are, are there in place. Uh, and in theory, this works. In theory, you shouldn't be working any more than that, and therefore you would be getting paid appropriately. We have to test that, of course, in reality. And every rota in a normal course of working um, would be tested twice a year, so once every six months, uh, and this is what's called uh, monitoring. Uh, it's a two-week exercise. Uh, it's just basically a, a diary exercise, uh, recording uh, when you're starting, when you're finishing, when you're getting a break, if you're getting your breaks, uh, and getting uh, as much information to test the theory with reality. Monitoring will not be taking place over this emergency uh, period, this national emergency that we're, we're facing, it has been um, suspended, uh, but when we get back to, to normality, uh, it, it will be back in play. It's very, very important, I, I can't stress enough how important it is to get those diary sheets back. I would advise that one or two of you uh, within that rota take it upon yourselves to collate and collect uh, your colleagues' forms, because if 75% or less, or if they, if they fail to meet 75% return, uh, in other words, if you get less than 75% of those forms back to medical staffing, back to the, the, to the employer, they can void the whole exercise, even if it's 73% or whatever it is, and it's telling you, yeah, this is this is a 1A, when we're actually being paid a 1B. And if it's left to individuals, human nature, people being very busy, uh, can sometimes say, right, well, if I don't do it, we'll be fine, because everyone else will. Well, obviously, uh, it only takes a certain number of people in the rota to um, have that view, and we miss out. So, organise yourselves, um, take pictures of that, have evidence that you, you have those um, completed sheets, uh, and, and get them into to medical staffing. If that two-week period, do you feel, is, is not representative of reality? If all of a sudden you've been told, no, 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 it's half past five, you need to go, whereas you've never been told that for the previous six to eight weeks, uh, then again, we need to know about that. Uh, we, we need to know if uh, this exercise has been, or the, 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 the whole rota and operation of that rota has been cleaned up for two weeks, and you'll never see the likes of that again. We need to make sure that this is representative of reality, and again, let us do the heavy lifting there. Let us do uh, the, the heavy lifting when it, when it comes to monitoring. If a monitoring exercise is done, uh, and it does show perhaps something to be non-compliant, the, the, the rest requirements haven't been met, for example, uh, which means 
100%, you can see it there. Uh, that's obviously a lot of money for a health board to pay out, basically doubling someone's salary for a, a period of months. It, it's of no surprise that there's often quite a bit of resistance to that from the health board. Uh, what do you do then? Well, we have a process what's called a banding appeal, um, where there's a, a panel of, I think, six members. Um, Fiona, my, my, my colleague Fiona Logan, uh, I think is on this call, she can correct me if I'm wrong there, um, but there is a a, a wide range uh, of of people on that board, uh, including someone from from the, the BMA's um, Scottish Junior Doctors Committee, um, to assess um, what the reality of the, this rota actually is. Generally speaking, in Scotland, we were very successful uh, when it comes to banding appeals, but it's an awful lot of work. Um, it's a fair bit of stress as well, and uh, a lot of admin involved. So again, use us um, to support you in that. In this interim period, as I said, no monitoring will be taking place. What we can do is uh, at least ascertain and get assurance um, that the template rotor is compliant in theory, that it's been run through the appropriate software system, and we at least have a starting point that the, the rotor hasn't just been uh, thrown together um, uh, off the cuff because everyone's scrambling around to, to try and be flexible with this crisis you still need rotors that at least make sense in theory, and we can do that. Um, we, we, we have the, uh, the, the authority to, to challenge um, uh, an employer, if that's the case. And some of you have seen, Fiona has confirmed that it's five people on a banding appeal. Uh, I was close. And that's the difference getting the banding correct makes to your salary. Uh, that, that FY1 salary of, of 24991 uh, again, if it's non-compliant, I mean, look, look at that impact, it shouldn't be non-compliant, and even if it, if it was found to be so, there would be some kind of uh, recognition uh, retrospectively, but we would be working, of course, to ensure that the, the, the rota was compliant going forward, so it would be in some of the, the, the yellow highlighted um, figures there. Again, uh, Fiona can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think, um, on average these days, uh, we probably have a, a 1A would be probably the most common, maybe a 1B. Um, so that's that's kind of what you would be looking at uh, in the middle there uh, as being um, your salary. I can't stress enough uh, that this is a supplement. Um, please don't make any financial decisions based on the, the 34987 or 37486 that you see there. Certainly don't be basing any mortgage applications in that because it will change as you rotate to a new rotor. Uh, that may have a new banding, and there's no protection on the old one because you're not doing the old one. Um, so it's, it's really important that you use your base salary um, for, for any kind of long-term um, financial planning, and you enjoy, save, use that supplement in whatever way you, you, you see fit. Uh, but we have seen people run into trouble with that in the past, uh, and again, one of the the takeaways from, from this, this talk any year um, is that. But as you can see, there's a big difference there, and it's important to get that banding right. Mentioned rest requirements before, uh, and that's, that, that's important. Um, the, the European Working Time Directive is the thing that kind of limits a, a normal working week to being an average of, of 40 hours. There are opt-outs of that available, of course. Um, and again, there are some some implications there with, with respect to rest. Uh, if you can't get 11 hours continuous rest a day, if you can't get a day off a week or two days off in a fortnight, if you can't get the 20-minute rest break every six hours, um, then that has to be compensated. Um, in, in, in some way further down the line. Uh, that, that's kind of what we're, what we're looking at. Um, the EWTD came into UK law in 2004, but there was a bit of resistance um, in the world of medicine um, in, in, in Britain. And I, don't, I think I'm right in saying it was maybe 2009 before it was uh, incorporated into to, to junior doctor rotors, uh, because it was felt that, that limiting the hours to only 48 was limiting exposure uh, to uh, the, the challenges of 
night shift, for example, uh, the challenges of being on call, um, forgetting that you're highly skilled, but you're, you're also human, and you get tired as well, and it, it's not um, not ideal. Uh, so there, there was a wee bit of resistance. Listen, rota monitoring and, and rota creation and, and, and ensuring things are compliant with, with, with New Deal and compliant with EWTD, and, and uh, there's a lot of, 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 of rules, um, some of it quite complex, especially in the calculations. Um, as a BMA member, you'll get a, a junior doctor's handbook by PDF. I'm not sure they give out the, uh, the thick hard copy anymore. Um, it's all there, and you're, you're, you're free to read at your leisure. Uh, but again, we have skilled, trained, and experienced employment advisors who deal with this um, on a weekly basis. Please use them um, to ensure that, that you're being paid appropriately and you're working appropriately. Which brings us on to the role of the BMA. Our primary role is that of a trade union. It is that uh, representative uh, advocacy role. Um, we are the voice of your profession uh, on a wider scale. Uh, as I said before, we have those sole negotiating rights um, over all the, the terms and conditions of service for, for NHS doctors. Um, but we provide that individual representation too. Um, and yeah, again, there are two aspects to that that are both equally as important. We are an international publishing house. You'll have of, of heard of the BMG. You'll have read the BMG, I'm sure. Uh, so that, that that should speak for itself. And there's um, scientific and educational research done uh, as well through the BMA. That representation, uh, that, that, that ability to be involved in medical politics um, is available to, to BMA members of all grades. Um, the Scottish Junior Doctor Committee uh, represents all of our trainees in Scotland. Uh, there are 36 reps ac across the country. That feeds into the, the UK JDC, uh, and it is fed into itself by our uh, regional um, junior doctors groups, um, which, again, uh, are able to discuss uh, and uh, ascertain um, issues that are perhaps a wee bit more local um, uh, and then feed that into a, a more national discussion. If you want to be involved in that, if you want to be able to represent your colleagues, there's the forum to do it. Benefits of membership, again, that, that individual employment advice and representation. Um, the, the, the contractual disputes, make sure you're paid properly, make sure you're getting the, the annual leave or the study leave or, or whatever it may be, um, can be a hassle. It can be. There's, there's no point in, in, in kidding on. Uh, and it's a hassle that you didn't train for. Um, you are involved in a very stressful environment already. Use your efforts there and let us do the heavy lifting on on behalf of you when it comes to any kind of contractual dispute. Um, I'd love to, to say that no one would be uh, involved in any kind of grievance, any kind of dispute, any kind of relationship issue, bullying, harassment, either uh, raising the complaint themselves or being the subject of the complaint, but that's not the case. We have 30 odd participants here. One of you will, at some point at least. Um, we are busy. And we're busy for a reason. It's, uh, again, a stressful environment that you're involved in. Uh, and, and people perceive conversations in, in different ways. And, and therefore, we, we, we have issues. Uh, a complexity of the contract I've discussed already. Again, having us on your side, having us to do that heavy lifting um, should be a way off your mind, even if it's just to discuss an issue. You might not even go forward with something. Um, but even just to have that conversation, bounce ideas off um, an, an employment advisor um, is, is very beneficial. Um, some of you will be subject to a, 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 a disciplinary at some point. I can assure you it's no fun being there on your own and having us there to defend you and to create a case uh, of defence, um, again, is a worthwhile thing to have. The contract checking service I've talked about can't say it enough. Um, please use it. Uh, the, the employment handout, the, the, the guide you get as a junior doctor, as a career grade doctor, uh, again, have all the information about your contract, everything that underpins the rules is there for you to check for your reference. Uh, I don't imagine many of you will have considered your pension. Um, 
but I've got a feeling you will be soon. Uh, and again, um, it's something that's, that's a hot topic, and we have a pensions department that are able to, to advise and guide you on that. Uh, clearly, we get some cases that are, are very much rooted in, in medical ethics, uh, and we have an ethics department that can assist there. You know about the BMJ. If you weren't a BMA member, it would be over £700 a month to get the BMJ. Uh, so that, that's part of membership, full access to the website. Uh, we have this uh, confidential counselling service. It used to be called Doctors for Doctors. Um, uh, again, a, a very worthwhile um, part of, of membership, um, speaking to someone who who has been there, who who knows what life as a, a doctor is like, both as a junior uh, and as an experienced career grade um, member as well, uh, and just being able to um, speak directly um, to someone who understands that position. And the BMA Library, um, one of, if not the biggest, uh, medical library in Western Europe, as a final year student, I hope you know uh, about that particular benefit by now. As I said, we're busy. These problems are common and depressingly so. Um, and if you're not a member, at the point at which a situation arises, we can't help. It's very much like uh, it's very much like insurance. Uh, we, we cannot uh, represent you, engage, fight on your behalf if something happened um, to start this problem when you weren't a member. So you need to be a member in advance. Ideally, you never use it. Ideally, you never use need to use your your, your house insurance, your car insurance, whatever. Um, but it is there to protect you. Um, and at this moment in time, it's free. It's free until October. Um, and at which point uh, our our subscription year uh, lasts for it runs from October to September. And in September, um, you would be getting a, an email or a letter to say. Um, as you know, your membership is free, but as of October 1st or whenever that date would be, um, it's going to change. You're going to be a doctor in the first year of training, and therefore your subscription rate will be X. I think it's about £9 a month at the moment. Um, nothing will be taken out your, your bank account. Nothing will change without your agreement. So you can you can leave it any time. But at least from now up until October, especially with this situation, uh, you'll be able um, to effectively try out membership. Uh, and see what, what benefits the BMA uh, can actually give you. You'll at least have two contracts to check between then. Um, so you, you, you'll be able to to get that. Uh, Julie asked, do we, do we join us finding your students or doctors if we've graduated uh, or yeah, just completed the early graduation? Um, I believe, and in, in Gail, our, our engagement um, coordinator, can um, cut me off here, but, but I, I would expect that that to be um, as a doctor if you've if you've graduated, uh, you're no longer a student. Um, ultimately, I, I don't imagine it, it, it makes much difference. It's free anyway, um, and you will be you'll be able to access um, th th those benefits uh, in either case. That's me. Um, thank you for listening. Are there any other questions um, before we go? I appreciate this is a a very different way of doing things. I much prefer being able to see if people are still looking at me or they're on their phones or staring at the ceiling or whatever that may be. Um, so if, if there is some feedback, if, if, if there are some, some questions uh, you still need to have answered, please use the, uh, the, the conversation bar, please. OK, um, as I said, this I hope has been up. Oh, when we should expect to, re expect to receive our contracts? Good question. Um, there is a bit of a, a misunderstanding that you you should have a your specific contract in place before you um, you start work. Um, that that has never been the case. There's a six week period, I think. Um, at which point you should receive what, what's called a written statement of particulars, your particular um, contract. Uh, in the normal course of business, that has been a lot tighter than it, than it, than it used to be, um, far more organised, far more um, uh, widespread in advance that, that the juniors would receive um, the, the, their, their contracts in, in, in good time. That doesn't mean if you don't have a contract, you shouldn't be getting paid, uh, or you know you have no rights whatsoever. That's 
obviously not true. Um, you're, you're, you're turning up for work, um, therefore you, you, have a, you have a contract of implication, uh, it would be called. And because you're an NHS doctor, um, you'd be working at, again, those agreed terms and conditions. There is full protection there. Um, but yeah, uh, if it's starting a bit concerning, um, then clearly with salary, for example, uh, then yeah, let us know and we can we can push um, push on that. Uh, in this particular situation, again, the priorities will just be getting people in and getting them working. Um, everyone is uh, uh, all hands to the pump at the moment, um, so so maybe bear with them then. But again, your your rights you should be starting at that salary I discussed. Um, all the terms and conditions that we, we 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 talked about are underpinned by the fact that it's an NHS employer uh, and you're a trainee. Uh, do we need to do anything about indemnity? Or we should wait to hear from societies. No, go and. Go and speak to them yourself. Uh, go and be proactive about that. Again, it's your choice. BMA is different. Um, there is only one of us that can um, uh, have these uh, wider uh, negotiations uh, and obviously uh, represent you uh, uh, in any kind of contractual dispute, relationship dispute, be what may. Um, there's competition in, in the world of defence, so um, please go out and, and see what, what deal. Um, Makes more sense for you. Limited number of FY1. Yes, th there are. Um, someone asked me yesterday, do we do we know how many will be produced? No. Um, it's a, a a very changing situation, and it will be as as, as many as as is required really, and that that number may increase, and it may not. We we, we may be over the worst of this. Um, before the worst fears are recognised, uh, and again we can then start to prepare for uh, the more core um, planned uh, roles uh, in August. So, uh, no, uh, I don't know what the number is, but but yeah, um, th th there will be a limit, but it hasn't been capped to anything specifically. Um, it will just be how many uh, can be arranged, how many can be organised, and, and um, how many are needed. And again, that that that, that might change. Okay, thank you very much for your time uh, on a Wednesday afternoon. Uh, as I said, it, it's been recorded. It will be out there, um, hopefully on YouTube at some point. And the uh, presentation itself with some of those details um, will be um, sent around the group. Thank you very much. Best of luck, guys. Uh, and again, join up now uh, and, and use us, especially in this, this interim period.